Hello, this is David from DN Cognitive Counseling. I don't know how many of you heard about Yahoo taking down their comments. Yahoo's statement was, and I quote, our goal is to create a safe and engaging place for users, for users to connect over interests and passions in order to improve our community experience. We are temporarily suspending article commenting. Safe spaces are a place where people think that they can be shielded from other people's ideas. I find this to be a reprehensible idea and another way that people censor other people. One of the things that you'll always hear me say in my comments is if you disagree with anything I say, please comment below. And I actually do mean that. And on tonight, I'd like to talk about um, some of the comments on Facebook on reopening schools. We've gotten a lot of comments, some negative, and I'd like to go over some of them. The thread starts out with Sheila stating, open the schools. Now, my comment was a little snarky. I will, I will take responsibility for that because basically it reminded me of Donald Trump's remark when he, when he was asked about the Arizona teacher that died. And he said, open the schools with no regard for the ideas about why that would be a problem, nor about what they're going to do about the problems and the issues about it. So my response back was, thank you, Donald Trump. I do understand your desire to open schools. I hope you will address the concerns in the video, which was a little snarky, but I thought appropriate given the open the schools remark. Sheila actually came back with US population, COVID facts, by the way. Uh, it looks like somebody's um, meme. It says COVID facts, US population 329 million, COVID cases 3 million. I'm, I'm right now just giving the averages. A death, 130,000, for which that means 0.94%, less than 1% of Americans have ever contracted the virus. It also means 95 point something, 72% of the those survive. Best of 0.4 of Americans have died from this virus, a survival rate of whatever. And then Sheila again gives another one, wearing masks signals one of two things. I've been, manipula I've been manipulated to live in an irrational fear or I'm willing to be controlled by a socialist age agenda. Um, to then she then gives a quote for uh, mosquito deaths and rodent deaths and all these different types of things. And last, of course, not not the least, not least, and she just puts out 800, 800 million children, or 800,000, excuse me, 100,000 children missing a year, um, 138,000 COVID deaths. What's the real virus? Um, Robert Muir, in um, response to Sheila's uh, comments about the cases of mosquito deaths, first he puts out the first number of cases of disease, second number of deaths, and he goes through the fact that Nebraska had 251 with 11 deaths, California 217 with 11 deaths, but the point he's trying to state is that in the United States, very, very few people, I think it's like less than 100, die from uh, mosquito deaths. Um, for those of you who were in New York during when West Nile was here, they were spraying like crazy when I think the death number was like four or five people died from mosquito deaths. And they went like into a panic mode and they were spraying all over the place to try to curb the mosquito population. So the idea that COVID is like no big deal because we only lost 130,000 cases, interesting fact. Uh, but we get very, very um, upset when a lot of people die from anything. Um, and then Robert continued, mosquitoes, one million deaths every year. That's the most deadly animal in the world is mosquitoes. It might seem impossible, but um, what is it? Uh, something so minuscule couldn't kill, uh, but it's true. And then he puts out the idea that um, uh, that most of the deaths are from malaria, um, and most of those cases are not in America. Um, and then Sheila put out, if you if you want to keep doing this, which is wearing masks because inevitably going to try to make you do this, and then it's a woman in a burqa. Now, I thought it was a very cute meme, but factually, something that makes absolutely no sense. Wearing a mask is not designed as a control factor to, to stop looking at somebody's beauty. A burqa is designed for modesty. Wearing a mask is designed for you not spreading your, um, your disease if you are infected to anybody else. So if I put a mask over myself, I am not protecting myself. I am protecting people around me. 
This is another misconception about masks. Um, and then Robert continued, I don't think Trump, who said to wear a mask, believes in Sharia law. Science is not political. So um, Sheila wrote back with, Rob, with to Robert stating, here is your science pal with a picture of Fauci with another man and woman. Uh, Fauci has his mask pushed down. A woman is sitting there with no mask. Actually, it's by her ear. And then another man sitting next to them with another mask um, in a stadium that is empty. Um, I'm guessing, Sheila, the idea is, is that these people who may know each other or they live next to each other may not be worried about each other with this issue. But the fact remains that the purpose of wearing the mask is for you not to give it to anybody else, not for you necessarily contracting it, especially, by the way, the mask they're wearing. As I mentioned, the N95 mask is the only mask that really protects you from airborne things. Jody responded to them by saying, how do you know he doesn't live with those people? Looks like they're the only ones there and there are no people in the stands. Um, and that seems to be true. He's not setting a particularly good example, but you aren't watching him in a bustling crowd of strangers with no mask either, or trampsing through Chinatown in February like Pelosi or de Blasio. And this is what I'm talking about by things getting political. Um, and then Sheila put back, it was a baseball game, fool. Yeah, but the only problem is there are no fans going to baseball games. The, fa the baseball games now are not open to the fans. So stating that it's a baseball game and there's lots of people there is not true. Um, uh, Sheila continue, if you're wearing a mask, why would you care if I'm not? Your masks are working, right? No, Sheila, that's not how masks work. That's not understanding it. Your mask does not protect you. Your mask protects others. And this is a mistake that people don't understand about that. Um, Sheila said, by your logic, we are all raging on Fauci for his pick. How do you know that the woman isn't his wife? Again, um, Sheila puts out, trying to push your beliefs on others. That's my point. Again, this is where the arguments go back and forth, where people are talking past each other. Sheila put out, ignorance is bliss. Um, and I have to say, Sheila... I'm not sure what the level of ignorance you're talking about. Um, Jody puts back out, look at the verbiage you spill and try to tell people is pushing on to who? And you laughed, really? And yes, yep, was the answer. To which uh, Sheila puts back, cove idiot, a person who is mathematically challenged and lacking critical thinking skills, relies on corporate media to tell them what to think, adopt irrational behaviors such as wearing face shields to protect them against the virus, that has a 0.2% fatality rate. Now, again, I love this. Uh, if you take 329 million people and you put about 0.2% fatality rate, do you know the number of deaths? Now, again, I, I think this becomes the, the issue here is that people do not recognize actually what these numbers actually mean. Uh, we, we, if everybody got the flu, you see, there's two numbers that are important. You have the death rate of, of how many people die but then you have the contagion rate. If the flu goes through a population, what is the percentage of the population that actually get the flu? When COVID goes through, what its contagion rate is just as important as what its death rate is. And the problem here is, is that people talk past each other. You'll notice this gets where politics comes in. I don't care about the politics. To me, this is not a political issue. For a lot of people, it seems to be. They seem to be focused in on whether or not my side or your side, where are you getting your facts from? I think that the president himself has finally come to the idea of wearing a mask, as he put it out himself out in public wearing one. Now, I'm not sure he did that because he believes in it. I, he might have done it because of political reasons. I don't know, because he wasn't doing it before. But the question becomes, what is going on? The amount of deaths in the United States for, for anybody looking at the numbers has gone back up which is not a good thing. I don't think any of us want it to be. Um, Jody writes back, ignorance is bliss. It's good to be self-aware. Um, I happen to be in agreement with that. You should be self-aware. Um, Sheila said, I'm glad that you see within yourself. So we've gotten past the point of conversation, and this has become a name-calling thing. Sort of like people in you know, school, which is the whole point of back opening up. So maybe both of them go back to school and learn how to insult each other in, in Insult 101, um, Jody wrote back about New York City numbers might mean something different uh, than to you then. And by the way, in New York, uh, New York has had 32,000 deaths so far for this pandemic, um, which, is, which is huge, huge number. 
Um, again, she laughs. Uh, Joey wrote back how original. Critical thinking media, you mean, like posting statistics with memes? That is pretty funny because that's what Sheila does a lot of here. Like Sheila said, like I force said, ignorance is bliss. Yep, be, Jody wrote back, being too ignorant to realize that a person can be a staunch conservative and see the purpose of wearing a mask when it's called for peace. And by, by the way, there are a lot of conservatives that do believe in wearing masks. Um, I think Ben Shapiro was on his uh, uh, show talking about the importance of wearing masks. So it's not about a conservative and, and liberal issue. I think it's a mistake that people are trying to either quote or the other. Um, to which Sheila puts out another one about this cute thing about the 10 p.m. medical satellites flying over the United States to take everybody's temperature and make sure you're standing outside naked and wave your ID in the air. It's very cute, Sheila. Sheila then wrote back a, what I think, a very finally a response that's actually a conversations piece as opposed to the childish games going back and forth. Um, of, of you're dumb and you're stupid and I don't like you, wah, wah. I think that, that Sheila does those say. I didn't say it, but I feel it. A friend messaged me this morning and asked why I don't take COVID and the mass situation seriously. I told him I do take the, this, the virus seriously. I believe the virus and that it's dangerous, but the people who are disseminating the information to us have a long track record of lying and showing dismissive contempt for American citizens as a whole. Now, Sheila, that's a very important point because the nature of where you get your information, how the, the information comes out, you do want to be, um, you know, open to. You want to have that conversation. I think that is important. And I think it's a very valid point. At what point the disease was supposed to have a 5% death rate? The death rate now has been reduced to less than a third of that, 1% worldwide. The truth is I'm opposed to masks. I'm not opposed to masks at all, much like carrying a firearm. I don't and won't shame anyone for deciding to wear one or not. Sort of my body, my choice situation, I suppose. Now, this is a little bit different than that, Sheila. And let me explain to you why. If you would be correct, if the mask was you were wearing it were protecting you, that, then you'd be 100% correct. But that's not how it works. Your mask protects others if you're asymptomatic and you don't know you're carrying it. And you wearing a mask does not protect you unless, unless it's the N95. And in America, the N95 is not readily available. So most people don't have that mask to protect themselves. So by you not wearing a mask and you're walking around spreading it to other people, you are now putting them in danger based upon your desire. And under American law, we generally do not allow that. right? I can't say to people, basically, if I have a, a disease that's open in the air and I don't want to be masked, that I just, tough luck, I'm going to get everybody else sick. We generally do not accept that as the answer. But your point about saying that the death rate went from originally a 5% to 1%, I'm not going to argue with. You're absolutely correct. And that's how science works. We, we start doing work and we start seeing what it is that we see in terms of the evidence. And then we start to tell what is the right answer. But again, the death rate is not relevant. Because you have to take a look at the contagion rate just as much. Because if we find out that 329 people... 329 million people, I mean everybody's going to be susceptible to it, and 1% of the population is going to die. That's an astronomical number of people. You can't say, well, we're just going to accept that 1% die. Then we have to keep the population safe. And again, it goes back to at what cost. And again, Sheila continues, and again, I think very intelligently when she says, however, when considering the trustworthiness of the information coming from our politicians, I've been unable to reconcile the fact that 200,000 people protesting in the streets is met with no concern, but a bar and restaurant and hair salon with 10 people, it could be disastrous. The idea of a Trump rally, 18,000 people, significant risk, to, but a group of 20,000 students tearing down a statue, it leaves me perplexed. Okay, not really, I understand perfectly what's going on. Sheila, everything you said there, is absolutely correct. There is hypocrisy going on, and this is the hypocrisy makes people then say, screw you. I don't gotta wear a mask because look at what you're letting them do, and then more people die. But you're absolutely correct. That is a hypocrisy that was going on, and if you've been looking at these videos, you'll know that I've been calling out that hypocrisy. I don't care about the politics. I care about the science and saving lives. Further, how could we take anyone seriously who mandates that free citizens stay at home and wear masks in public, but also calls for acceptance of millions of immigrants entering our society legally with no record of immunizations against more common diseases in, in, of every day? Again, Sheila, I can't disagree with one sentence you put there. 
is a huge hypocrisy and makes absolutely no sense for people to believe that we have to protect our citizens on one hand and say we don't have to protect them on the other. You're 100% correct. I, I think the idea of illegal immigration and people that are, make the argument for illegal immigration is an irrational one. Legal immigration and coming through, being checked, being able to see, absolutely. But the idea of illegal immigration as an, as an ideology and thinking it's an intelligent position, it really goes without reason. The truth is our political leaders, just like guns, drugs, and national debt or sex trafficking, have absolutely no idea what they're talking about, no plan outside what's handed out to them six seconds before they reach the podium. Sheila, again, I'm not going to disagree. I think that there is an, there's an aspect of our politicians in general taking politi po politics over, over reality. Um, so I choose to protect myself as I see fit. If anyone doesn't like it, I'm okay with that. I just think it's a protest. They seem to be okay with many people. Okay, cool. And again, Sheila, I appreciate the comment. And I, I'm glad we got away from the name calling and the back and forth and got to actually something that was good. Now, Jody's reaction to this I thought was great. I do consider to be a person's choice, especially in the areas where they're hit hard. And definitely call that the hypocrisy of the protests versus Trump rallies. I'm on board with all of that, but I'm going to downplay the day. Uh, but I'm not going to downplay the dangers of the virus in hard hit areas in those instances. I'm going to trust the numbers and err on the side of caution. I'm also not going to waste my time believing this to be a road of Sharia law or track conspiracies designed by Bill Gates. I see people affected too closely to home in record record numbers enough to know about protective, to be too be protective, especially if those are vulnerable like my own daughter. Wow. And again, Jody, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, and I hope that, you know, she does well. But think about what, what she's saying here, Sheila, where you two are actually having a conversation now about something that's real, as opposed to the name calling that was going on before. But if you don't have the dialogue and you don't give your opinion, then you can't have that conversation. Bonnie gives her thing that starts off in another part, which is enough already. Open up our schools, country uh, schools, country, our schools, country. Kids belong in schools. If teachers are afraid, get another job. Okay? So Bonnie's thing, again, very similar to Sheila's was that. Robert wrote back, um, if 8 to 11 million people die, you're okay with that. And then Sean chipped in with 1,150 1, dead today in the U.S., and the world 6,109. Yes, nothing to worry about. And mosquitoes kill 2,739 a day in the world. And they're, and this with restrictions. Sure, open, open it all up. Let's kill almost about 9% of the population. No issues. 0.9%, excuse me, not 9%, 0.9%. So it's almost agreeing with that. If you go through the entire population for every 3 million cases, 100,000 dead. I rounded it for easy math. Almost 11 people would be dead. Is that acceptable to you? Um, and then John gave another, uh, you know, picture with one of those things. They have those memes. Let's be clear on what Trump said today. Due to the coronavirus, it is not safe enough to hold the Republican convention, but it is safe enough for Donald Trump to send your children to school and to threaten your children's schools if they don't open. Let that sink in. Now, John, I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer you about that because it's a valid point about the question, but it's actually a mistake. There is no question based upon the numbers, children seem to have a special protection for coronavirus. Their death rates are not in the 0.9% rate. They're at the 0.0001% rate. But for some reason, kids are not affected by this virus. So this, the idea that Trump says, let's not have these people open here, but let's open up for the schools is the question. Big question is, what is the ability for children to transmit the virus? And that's still an open question and being argued about right now in the science about what is that rate that would happen and how many people would get it. And is there a way to do this that protects kids to be able to go to school at the same time protect children and the adults from getting it? Because the adults are the ones that, that are, are much more in trouble. In the school I work at, it's the adults that went into the hospital, the ICUs, and the deaths, not the kids. The kids were all fine. Even the kids that had corona, no, no issues with them. The problem is not the kids. So the idea that Trump says the schools are gonna be opened and it's not going to hurt the kids. It's not a crazy idea. And the idea that adults are more in danger. This is an ageist virus. The older you are, the more at risk you are. That's just a statement of the scientific fact. The younger you are, the safer you are. It doesn't mean that if you're young, you can have no risk. As the 30-year-old in Texas found out, um, who went ahead and said right before he died, ooh, that was a mistake. He went to a coronavirus party 
in order to try to get it, and he did, and he ended up killing him. So it, it's sad, these types of things that take place. But kids particularly, much more protected. General back, Trump is looking in alternative ways to open them, such as have kids go in, but the teachers zooming in and the class thing being watched by younger, less vulnerable people, um, or those with antibodies. No one's, look, no one's looking to be blatantly careless here. Um, Jody, I hope that you're correct about that. I, I don't know what the plans are or what the plans aren't, what they have. It's very unclear of what they have in terms of opening the schools. I will say Trump's demeanor in terms of his statement about it seems to be sort of only um, a little without regard with nuance. It's sort of like he's just being blunt. And I think it gives people sometimes like the idea that he doesn't care. And I think that's a problem. I think it would be much better if he came out with a plan and said, this is how we're playing to protect the adults and, our, and the people that are vulnerable. Um, now, John put back another meme. Let's be clear on what Donald Trump said today. Due to the coronavirus, it's not safe enough for the Republican Convention, but it's safe enough for Donald Trump to send his children to school and is to not threaten your children's school if you don't open. John, as again, I actually explained, um, I do think that you could have those two positions and they're not contradictory because the fact is children are more protected. Um, Jody uh, said, oops, Sam, I'm having deja vu. Um, and then she put a meme out. They did nothing to protect your children from being killed at school by gunfire. Do you really think they're going to do anything to protect, or oh, John put out, do you really think they're going to do anything to protect your children from being killed by school by a virus? And Jody put, let me help, let me help you with this one. Um, and then John wrote, dump the Trump and the nightmare. And I think this is where politics comes in. Um, to say that you can't criticize Donald Trump for his response, I, I'd say you are wrong. You can criticize him for it. I think that he's making a statement here that is not really putting people to feel secure in his decision about what he's deciding. And he's not explaining himself. So what happens is it builds fear. On the same token, I think that his position could be explained and he could explain the reason why he feels this is important. As I mentioned in the video, I don't have all the answers and I don't pretend to. But I'm very glad for the dialogue and for people to be able to talk about the things that they're thinking and they're feeling. I only wish Yahoo had the same belief in people. And I really appreciated the discussion between Jody and Sheila because even though it got to the point where it was going back and forth and being childish at one point, it got to the idea of being more adult-like and actually having a conversation about the belief system and why. And once you start to do that, you could actually be able to open up and be able to hear another point of view or hear maybe why you might be wrong about something or somebody else will hear maybe why they're wrong about something. And I'm never afraid to hear why I might be wrong about something. So I appreciate very much the dialogue and I hope that you'll continue to express your opinions and I love to hear it. And again, if you like this video, hit like. If you disliked anything about it, please tell me why. And of course, um, if you didn't subscribe already, please do. Please share. And last but not least, if you like to become a patron, you go to the subscribe star link below. I thank you very much. Have a good night and good mental health.